Welcome to another edition of North Georgia Business Radio X Business Minute. We're welcoming Mitch Taylor, running for sheriff here in Hall County. And guess what? The election is on Tuesday. Welcome, Mitch. Good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for the inviting us. It's so good. I, I mean, like, honestly, we, we had, like, this this fun thing in the parking lot. Of course, you know, we're, we're dealing with COVID-19. We're dealing with the coronavirus. We're dealing with so many different things. And um, yet, here you are. Well, you I showed get, up. We, we're social distancing. That's right. That's right. Let's get that out there. Make sure everybody knows we're we social are, distancing. We are, for Every, sure. Everything's sanitized. But I'm telling you, um, I really want to welcome you guys back to another edition of North Georgia Business Radio X Business Minute. I'm so glad that you guys are continuing to tune in and really want to, like you really care about what's going on. So welcome and tell us, Mitch, tell us a little bit about you. Well, born and raised here in Gainesville Hall County, Georgia. Uh, grew up in the Buford area, went to Buford High School, graduated from Buford High School in 1989, played a little college baseball at Middle Georgia College, returned home from there and got into law enforcement. Started with Hall County Sheriff's Office in 1992 and retired in 2013. I married, have uh, four ch- uh, stepchildren, and we have four grandchildren. Oh, my Lord. Yep. So keeps us busy. It's fun. Grandbabies are fun. So you retired mm-hmm. in 2014. 13. 13. Mm-hmm. Oh, pardon. Yep. Um, 2013. So what did you do? Were you just like, hey, this isn't for me? Or is it like, oh, kind yeah. of pulling your hair out? Is it because you had like all those kids and grandkids coming up? No, it was It was really just uh, we, we'd started building a house and, and uh, I'd had several surgeries. I had some medical issues there at the end and I had like seven surgeries in, in like a year and a half and with uh, some old injuries and things like that from from weights and baseball and stuff like that and playing sports and riding motocross and you know all the things we used to do when we were young and could do it you know <laughs> and uh, so anyway all that started catching up with me and uh, so I had several uh, you know a fair amount of surgeries in that last year and a half or so and and uh, in 2013 I just uh, I thought well you know what it's just it's time for me to take a break and get this house finished and uh and get that done because we'd been working on that. So, uh, so we we got the house built, and of course couldn't stand retirement too long, and wound up getting say, getting back into it. I was like, did you you gave up motorcycles to build a house? Yes, absolutely. Have to. Hey, when your wife is on you, happy wife, happy life. Oh well, you know what? <laughs> I did, I will take your word for it, but uh, uh, yeah, believe me, I, I I know my stepdad's a contractor, a general contractor, mm-hmm. and I've scratched enough brick in my life to know that I never want to do it again. So I think I'd rather be riding motorcycles. But kudos yep. to you. I well, mean, thank you. Seriously, like kudos to you. So you're obviously you've been on the campaign trail for a while. That's right. And um. Um, I know Chris Hall, and I've spoken uh, with uh, Gerald Couch, and, you know, tell me, why is it that you want to do this? Like, what is what drives you to want to be the sheriff of Hall County? Well, it's something that I've always thought about doing and had, it, I guess, you would, if you want to say that dream or that vision of doing that. And uh, with some of the things that's going on, and I just right now, I think it was the perfect time. And I just I, I, I want to get in there and give those employees and give the community uh, their their due and, and make a better department and better morale for our guys, our men and women there, and uh, just provide a good service for our community, the one that they deserve. Well, I think that's great because I know um – well, just from, and please, please correct me if I'm wrong. I know there's been, there's like a lot of open, um, there are a lot of openings. There is. There's a big and turnover. And the sheriff's department and the turnover rate is really high. Yep. Now, um, what do you attribute that to? Do you attribute that to uh, training? Do you attribute that to hours? Um what is it? I think a lot of mainly it's going to be your leadership uh, and people in public safety. I mean they they want to work for a good leader. They want to work for a good leader, somebody that's got their back that will look after them, stand up for them, and that's the biggest part of that. And 
The other thing is investing in your employees. Invest in them. When, when they come to work for you, you know, start a plan with them. You know, a five-year plan, three-year plan, whatever. What do you want to do here? Why are you here at Hall County Sheriff's Office? Do you want to be on the dive team? Do you want to be in the patrol division? Do you want to go into investigations? Do you want to be on the SWAT team? Or, you know, what, what is your plan here? What do you want to do here so we can help you succeed, invest in you, and give them the training that they need to succeed? And I think that you'll see that once those – once this younger generation sees that you invest in them and you, you spend that time with them, then I think that you'll you'll see a, a reduction in the turnover, and I think that they'll want to stay. I think that's really true. I mean, honestly, I, I don't think they're, they're an employees. I mean, you're talking about brothers and sisters, right. people who are – you have each other's back. That's right. Every single day. So tell me about this, because obviously we're dealing with a lot right now, and I, d I don't want to delve too much into this, right. but um, uh, obviously, how are we going to kind of bridge the gap between law enforcement and community? Do you have a plan for this, or do you have any type of ideas? Well, this is one thing that pretty much our platform's been from the from the day one is is get the sheriff's office in the community partnerships with different agencies and organizations that are doing great things in our community nonprofits are doing great things in our community uh, men's groups that we used to do years ago we would do men's groups ministries and things like that and and uh, that was just a super thing in the community and the community knew the officers they got to see them in a different capacity other than maybe coming to their house to respond to a call or being pulled over on a traffic stop so you actually got to see that the law enforcement men and women are actually people i mean that they're human that's awesome they're human mm -hmm. and getting out there and forming these partnerships with our communities is 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 the way to go that's the, the we got to have the community trust because if we don't have the community confidence and the community trust we have nothing exactly so there are things that obviously we both have to earn um you guys have to earn as law enforcement and we have to earn as a community and those are two totally different things now with you earning, obviously, we really need to up the the training and things of that nature, mm -hmm. which that we will deal with at a, at a different time. But as a community, we also have to understand that we have to unite. Correct. And we have to support one another exactly. rather than going against. So this is one of the big things. I love the community programs. And I know right now there's only like maybe one or two uh, community programs that the sheriff's department has. Right. Um, I believe it's CHAMPS. Mm -hmm. Am I right? That's correct. Um, is there any, you know, possible... <laughs> possibility of expanding that beyond just fifth graders because i mean think about the middle schoolers i mean we have gangs here yes and they are starting to recruit in middle school we have a large large problem yes and so is there any anything like because i know parish uh and gainesville city has uh, a mental health liaison mm -hmm. is there any focus or any plan on expanding on the well the help for our kids absolutely I, I certainly would like to get into that to this sro a little bit deeper and maybe expand some of that um i tell you i have a a uh, granddaughter that in the fourth that's just finished the fourth grade and some of the things that she was exposed to uh, through cell phones and social media and things like that. And the, I mean, I could not believe it in the fourth grade. And they're Ugh. about to go to middle school. I mean, I, I mean, I like, I come outside myself when my wife told me. Uh, I just overheard her and, a, and Christina, our daughter, having a conversation. And I mean, I like to flip. I said, are you kidding me? In the fourth grade? Yes. In yeah. the fourth grade? I have a junior, a seventh grader, and a sixth grader. So, yes, I have been there and... I'm a podcaster. You can only imagine what right, came out right. of my mouth. <laughs> and, 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 here's my th and here's my thing for that. Now, I'm not talking about police and kids at this age. No. But I'm talking about bringing awareness to parents. I mean, that's, that's what 
you know, we need to be there and listen. You know, you need to be involved in what's on your children's iPads, cell phones, computers. You need to be involved in that. You need to limit that. You need to check that periodically. And not just that, because there are some parents um, that maybe maybe there's a child in school, and that's why we're talking about these there. programs. Yep. Maybe they don't have that um, that check. Correct. Or that, hey, you know what? This might not be the best thing. And that's why some of these counseling programs and liaison programs, mm-hmm. because it could be drugs, it could be alcohol, it could be just absent parents, it can be abuse. Yep. The, the possibilities, unfortunately, are limitless. That's right. So that's right. And and if they see us in the schools at that age and, and you know, we're 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 there for them and we want them to be able to come up and talk to us and tell us anything. Feel comfortable talking to us. Don't be afraid of us. And you know, you'll see some young children in the restaurants and things like that and they'll kinda of look at you like they're scared of you or, or whatever. But you know, that's what you don't want. You want them to come up and, and say, Hey, that's a friendly that's a friendly uniform there. You know, that's that's my friend. That's my, you know, I can talk to that person. I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. I graduated from Gainesville High School in 1996, and I saw my old SRO mm-hmm. um, last year. Mm-hmm. And I will not tell you how old I am, <laughs> but I just did because I told you, I'd yes, go, whatever. That's it. So um, I sat there, and he looked at me, and he was like, Joy! And I just gave him the biggest hug because he was always someone that I could go up to and I could trust. And I think that we need to, my personal opinion, is to expand the SRO program with within all of the schools because they're not a police presence. It is a police presence that makes them feel safe. It does. It makes them feel safe. And you would not believe the information that these school resource officers gather from the students at the schools, like you were talking about drug activity, gang activity, those kind of things. I, you know, a school resource, school resource officer is so important, and they gather so much information and intel that it's, it's, it's just uh, it's amazing what all that, the, that you can find out from your, from your school resource officer if you just go talk to them. You know, it, it, it really is. It, it's crazy how important they are. And um, I love the fact that uh, you're really hitting on that. Now, tell me, do you have like a, a one, three, five year plan? Like what is going on? What are you going to do to change what is happening in Hall County Sheriff's Department? Well, I've got I've reached out to a lot of people. Obviously, we're I've got to see how this this turns out on Tuesday in the evening, and I have reached out to uh, a lot of people to gain their opinions and help. And you touched on something a while ago, like the mental health here. I know that uh, G Parish is doing something like that at Gainesville, and uh, I go to church with uh, Miss Levi, who is over the um, um, uh, mental health program here in Hall County. Cindy Levi is her name, and. Uh, so she she's over that. She and I have talked about it extensively, and I think a lot of those people that she deals with in the mental health also wind up in our jails repeatedly. They're just repeat offenders. Oh. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying. They're just a revolving door, yep. and that's cost to taxpayers. And it's not just that; it's, it's cost to taxpayers, yep. and it's also it's, it's a, costly for well being for a, the inmates. And it's sad. I mean, it, it yes. really is, and, and, it, and it's sad that we don't have anything. You know, all these these places have closed down over the years. You know, when I in in my early career back in the nineties, you know, we had like Georgia Mental Health GMHI, as we used to call it, Georgia Mental Health Institute. You know, you could take them down there or things like that. But now, there's nothing out there for someone who doesn't have insurance or an income or anything like that. It's 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 a it's a broke system. Well, you know what? It's a broken system, but I think that's why we want to find out what your plans are to do with it. So if you have, so we, you, you actually just said mm-hmm. it's a revolving door mm-hmm. for some people yep. because they feel like that's the only thing or however they feel. We don't know. We can only speak for ourselves. Right. But. What do you think about expanding some of the inmate programs and maybe distributing some of the some of the funds that you're able to get for vocational 
mm-hmm. or maybe for the animal shelter or things like that. Like, hey, we can really give these guys some skills and these, these guys and these girls that are coming in and it gives them some type of purpose, not just mental health, which is extremely important. Right. Probably the most important thing. Yep. But to have a really good set, like sense of self and then to follow that up with a vocation, mm-hmm. wow, if we, you won't see them back. No, that, that's, that's the hope. That's the hope. Um, I have uh, Sheriff Conway and Gwinnett is a good friend of the families, and he and I have I've reached out to him quite a bit because he has several of these programs that he has put together in Gwinnett County. And one of them is like a reentry program. So there's actually somebody who stays in touch with our local businesses uh, and our you know, industries in here in, in Gainesville Hall County that may need help, whether it's just day labor, anything like that. And so that person will help these ladies and gentlemen that are about to get out of jail and go back into the, it, get, go back into the free world, get a job, so that maybe they won't go back to that same crowd that, or, or get, get hooked, you know, go back to the drug use or the mental health problem that they may have or, you know, whatever they're in there for. Just having a reentry program that will help them get on their feet, maybe gain some independence. You know, that's that's really big, though. Yes. I mean, it's huge. Well, he, it has been so successful for them. It really has. It has been really successful. For them. So is that something that you're looking Absolutely. into to try and implement Ab- here in Hall County? Absolutely. Absolutely. That would get these people. And that's what you want them to do is just get them that independence, give them a little bit of self-esteem. You know, hey, I, I got a job. You know, I can make it on my own. I don't need to go back to that gang. Um, you don't have to go back to any of it. Yeah, you don't have to go back to any whether of it. Whether it's an, an abusive spouse or partner. Right. Um, or, whether, or child support, things like that. That, that and, and those are the little th- those These small things is what really bogs the system down is, is your probation. They get behind on their probation fines. Then the probation officer obviously violates their probation and those kind of things. Or, or uh, child support. So those are the small things that bog the jail down so bad, our our criminal justice system down so bad. So, and here's my thing. I know. I I had a puppy find me. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Don't even ask. Yep. But um, I had a puppy find me. And how awesome would it be if we were able to get some of these inmates hooked up with possibly, like, the Humane Society or mm-hmm. the Animal Shelter, and then possibly with some of the canine officers mm-hmm. to start training service dogs to contribute to society. And then it's just like when you have soldiers that you know go overseas and they have their dogs and... It's like a partner for life. It's a purpose. Correct. I think that's the biggest thing is giving these people purpose. Well, and that's a craft that they can use also. And that is another program. It's called Second Chance that Butch Conway has down there. And uh, I've studied that and I've always made fun of him, told him I was going to steal it from him. And he said, really, you should. And I know that Sheriff Freeman, I think, has just started that program now in Forsyth County. That's awesome. So they are obviously, and 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 I've reached out to uh, several dog trainers who have trained law enforcement dogs and they have their own schools that they do for personal uh, as well and uh, all of them have volunteered to help come in and help some of our inmates uh, work with these animals and of course the second chance for Gwinnett Gwinnett County what they use that for is an adoption process because it makes the animals so much easier to be adopted if they're trained so if they're coming in and they're looking for a dog uh, whatever size or, or, or breed of whatever, but knowing that dog is already crate trained, that dog's already potty trained, that dog is already trained around people. It's used to it's acclimating and being around people and things like that, and they adopt they get adopted so fast when they're already trained. You know what else is coming up really fast? What's that? Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. Tuesday's coming up really fast, guys. Um, Mitch Taylor, you've been an amazing guest. I appreciate it so much. Now, I want to ask you one more thing. How can we find out more about you? How can we get in touch with you? Face whatever social media, email, phone number, whatever you want to give out. How can we get in touch with you? Yes, we're on the, we're on the website, also, MitchTaylorSheriff.com, uh, and look us up on the Facebook, 
Mitch Taylor for Sheriff. You can tell he's on that's the it. Facebook. That's it. The Facebook. <laughs> the Facebook. And uh, yeah, and my phone number is on is is on is on both of those. So reach out to us. I'll be glad to. I, I'll be honest with you. I was on the phone to two thirty this morning with some people that had, had uh, explaining some experiences that they had had, and and uh, she couldn't believe I set up to two thirty this morning talking with them. The family on the phone and and uh, it was it was great. I mean, it was it was. I got to share some things with them that. Uh, anyway, it was it was it was great. So just call us. I don't mind. That's that's going to be my biggest thing. My, that you will that I'm a people person. I'm out in the community. So we're going to see you then. You're going to see me. I promise you. How are we going to see you? Are you going to pull me over, Mitch? No, I'm not going to be out here pulling you over. I'm going to be out here at your radio station when you're hosting events. Uh, maybe. Helping. Oh, I was going to say if I'm getting in trouble, you better pull no, me over. Well, I'm going to. Well, you know, we'll we'll we we want to be. I want to be a positive face of the sheriff's office, though. But seriously, we want to be out here helping anybody that's doing good things and and uh, nonprofits, any charities, things like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of great ministries here in Hall County that work with our uh, human traffic. And our girls and yeah. things like that, boys that are being trafficked and things like that, and we want to form those partnerships with them as well. And we want we we are going to be in the community 100. percent I promise you won't find me at the office. I'll have, you if you need me, I'll have to come see you probably because you won't going to find me at the office. Well, that sounds great. All right, so give us that information one more time of how to get in touch with you, Mitch. Uh, SheriffTaylor.com and Facebook also Mitch Taylor for Sheriff. All right, guys. Well, once again, this is Joy Whitlow with North Georgia Business Radio X Business Minute. You are going to listen to us next time.